So born and raised in the countryside of Argentina, I grew up collecting fossils, reading Charles Darwin and Jules Verne, and asking why and how humans are so unique and special. My curiosity drove me to study anthropology, and I immediately fell in love with the evolution of human diversity. But I soon realized that humans are only one example of a cognitive and ecological adaptation, only a small fragment in the evolution of intelligence. And what makes us, all of us, so unique is our brains. Um, just think about this. Every single thought, memory, action, plan, decision, habit, and movement are constructed by the most complex system ever studied, the brain. This is why I decided to do my PhD in Stony Brook University and learn from the best experts in neuroanatomy, comparative neuroscience, evolutionary biology, microevolution, and phylogenetic methods. Today, it is my pleasure to present my doctoral project and the ideas that I will explain in the next couple of years of my life. So the brain is the anatomical substrate of behavior. The behaviors of different species are closely linked to their evolutionary history and ecological context. In order to understand behavior, we need to consider where this behavior is coming from, where in the brain that behavior is being constructed. It is fundamentally important to study the neural basis of intelligent behavior. So in order to understand the evolution of intelligence, we must investigate the precise neural substrate that allow animals to adapt to their specific contexts. Brains display adaptations in response to selective pressures in the environment. By looking at the phylogenetic changes of the neural substrate for cognition, we will be able to illuminate the evolutionary history of animal adaptations. One particular neural substrate, the corticostriatal system, has played a fundamental role in the evolution of higher cognition in vertebrates and primates in particular. As the neural basis of learning and regulation of behavior, this network has allowed the elaboration of specialized mental representations that compete in the optimization of behavior and consequently the creation of a decision-making system for survival. Despite the crucial significance of this system to cognition, little research has investigated the comparative neuroanatomy and evolutionary history of its components. So let's dive deeper in this neural network. So the corticostriatal system is composed by the striatum, this highly complex three-dimensional subcortical structure that you can see here in this uh, image, which is present in all vertebrates and the cerebral cortex, which only emerged and expanded in mammals. Both brain areas have evolved in parallel and are deeply functionally related, because the information processed by the frontal cortex is regulated by the striatum. So information then is processed in the brain by specific areas. This diagram here depicts the components and the direction of information processing in which cortical information targets the striatum. Significantly, both the striatum and the frontal cortex are hierarchically and selectively organized. The degree of executive functions of the frontal cortex corresponds with the hierarchy of information in the decision-making and execution processes. In consequence, striatal function can be subdivided according to the level of integration, complexity, and abstraction of the information that is being processed. So the polar and orbital prefrontal cortices are targeting the nucleus accumbens, also known as the ventral striatum. The medial and lateral prefrontal cortices are reaching exclusively the corded nucleus, or dorsomedial striatum. And lastly, the premotor and motor cortices are targeting the putamen, also known as the dorsolateral striatum. So this functional and hierarchical cortical configuration is crucial to understanding the topography of the projections to the three specific nuclei of the striatum, which are divided according to their cortical input, their precise C2 architecture, and their functional specialization. Now, let's see in detail the specific functions that are being mediated by these three striatal nuclei, which are essential for the evolution of complex behavior. Neurobiological evidence agrees that the motivation of behavior is processed by the nucleus accumbens. Diverse cognitive elaborations are being processed by the corded nucleus and the putamen is in charge of sensory motor coordination and integration. So in particular, reinforcement learning is a cognitive process that is, that is composed of different types, all of which are mediated by specific corticostriatal loops of information. 
The nucleus accumbens is in charge of a stimulus outcome learning. This learning mechanism happens when a neutral condition stimulus is paired with an unconditioned outcome. Let's see an example. A primate learns to avoid certain fruits if it in the past a similar type of fruit is causing a uh, stomach discomfort or pain. The coding nucleus is responsible for action outcome learning, which is defined as the acquisition and performance of goal-directed actions. In this learning process, behavior or action causes a direct outcome. As an example, we have a primate that after considering all the options of fruit availability in its surroundings, it climbs to the highest top of the tree to get the best fruits. And finally, the putamen is managing stimulus response learning. This mechanism occurs when a stimulus produces a behavior or response. It is closely related to spatially complex navigation. For instance, a primate sees and hears an insect flying in, in the immediate surroundings and it performs a quick, swift arm and hand movement to catch that insect. In addition to the fundamental role of the striatum in animal learning, the different components of the striatum form the neural basis for the formation of habits. Define as the process in which a behavior becomes more automatic and specific with extensive practice, habit formation occurs when the control of behavior is changing from a higher level of functional integration, which is an associated corticostriatal system mediated by the core nucleus via an action outcome processing, to a lower one, such as sensory motor corticostriatal system mediated by the putamen via the stimulus, a stimulus response learning. And as the neural substrate for behavioral control, the striatum played a key role also in the evolution of behavioral optimization, because it's selecting which options to perform based on updated representations of the current context. In this sense, effective behavior and hence optimal survival are accomplished by selecting the most appropriate actions while suppressing the inappropriate ones. The processing of information at the different stages of decision-making, such as identification, planning, and implementation, affects the realization of specific goals. The nucleus accumbens is involved in goal selection, which conforms the highest level in the scale of information processing. The core nucleus serves in action selection, including mental processes of intermediate complexity, such as deciding the information to be maintained in working memory or the strategies to use in pursuit of a goal. And finally, the putamen is associated with movement selection and sensory motor integration, which links the low level stage of information to the choice of specific actions and movements. So in this sense, the, th the three different striatal nuclei are mediating different phases of cognitive and motor control. So to start building the expectations of my project based on the unanswered questions of the evolution of this neural system in primates, first, I expect an increase of putamen relative volume and strepsorines due to a higher demand over sensory motor corticostriatal system and stimulus response learning. I also expect an increase in coded nucleus processing of information in anthropoids due to a higher use of associated corticostriatal system and action outcome learning. And I finally expect an increase in nucleus accumbens relative volume in hominids, especially in humans, due to the planning of abstract goal, goals and the regulation of complex social interactions. So the objective of my doctoral project is to investigate how learning and behavioral control have evolved in different primate lineages by quantifying the morphological variation in their neural substrate. I aim to measure the relative volume and connectivity pattern of the striatal subregions across a diverse sample of primates. The measure variation will be used to test hypotheses and estimate patterns of evolution in the primate striatum. The overarching rationale is that by quantifying a functional specific substrate, this project will provide novel insight into the evolution of the diverse learning systems and mechanisms of behavioral control across primates. 
So really simple, I will delineate the striatum and its subregions in terms of the C2 architecture. So you can see if you follow my cursor, you have the dorsomedial striatum here, specifically the head of the core nucleus, which is separated by the putamen laterally by the internal capsule. And we have further inferiorly on this coronal section, the nucleus accumbens, which is only present in the first stages of that rostrocaudal extension. It is also really interesting to remember that we are talking about specific gray matter nucleus nuclei which are embedded in white matter tracts and fibers in the brain. And also I will be measuring both the relative volumes and connectivity on more than 49 sp uh, primate species, that is my expectation. I will analyze the already, an, an already prepared collection of coronally uh, sliced uh, brains at the Vogt Institute of Brain Research in Dusseldorf, Germany. So despite the essential role of the striatum in learning and behavioral control, modern comparative neuroanatomical studies in primates have ignored the striatum, and no study has focused on the role in the evolution of behavioral adaptations. So my thesis will address this gap by studying the evolutionary diversification of the striatum and its subregions across a broad sample of primate species. Considering the functional specificity of the nucleus accumbens, the core nucleus, and the putamen, it will, for the very first time, separately test hypotheses concerning the evolution of learning and control of behavior in primates by using cutting-edge phylogenetic comparative methods. My aim is to complement behavioral studies of primates with relevant neurobiological and evolutionary information. This project will focus on investigating the evolution of higher cognition in primates. I aspire to advance in the understanding of how different learning mechanisms, such as action outcome versus a stimulus response, and also habit formation processes, such as associative corticosteroidal system versus sensory motor corticosteroidal system, have evolved in primates. This project will strengthen the current knowledge of the evolutionary trajectory in primates of behavioral optimization regarding decision-making, problem-solving, and foraging efficiency. And lastly, this research will provide an evolutionary explanation regarding the importance of social interactions and the reward that is associated with it. So to conclude, the brains of living species are the successful product of several millions of years of constant evolution. Natural selection has shaped and is still shaping this extremely complex structure towards the elaboration of the most rewarding behavior biologically possible for the particular ecosystem animals live in. Most importantly, the corticosteroidal system evolved as a decisive network that enables learning and therefore the regulation of adaptive and optimal behavior. This network connects the striatum, outstandingly homologous nuclei across vertebrates with the neocortex, extremely divergent structure across mammals. Despite the functional significance and detailed characterization in model species, a broad comparative study of striatal evolution has never been conducted. This research thesis will use precise measurements and phylogenetic methods to examine the variation both in relative volume and connectivity of this well-defined neural substrate in a diverse sample of species. This project will contribute to characterize the evolution of intelligence in humans and our closest relatives. So thank you so much for your time and attention. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have.